Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Eagle Stand Tournament here in Kishino, the beautiful capital of Moldova. The main event of this evening, the lightweight title fight between Grigore Pamphili and Ivan Svilia. Two exceptional fighters with unbelievable character and only one championship belt. The bow that will make your blood run cold and send shiver down your spine. The co-main event of this evening, the fight for the temporary championship belt between Dimitro Predelbayo and Gheorghe Lupu. We will see a great fight and find out who is worthy of the interim title. Moreover, we'll anticipate in the fight involving the reigning champions, Luka Poklit and Alexander Romanov, Mikhail Sirbu, Donna Kelly, Gheorghe Lupu, Valery Mircea and Vasile Suprovic will also showcase their skill. Kishino, Manesh Arena, Eagleston, be the first to be the best. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the referee of the Eagleston Tournament. Presenting first, this first supervisor, Pokatilov Pavel. Second referee, Marius Domasad. Third referee, Pokatilov Denis. Fourth referee, Petkoglo Alexandru. Lateral judge, Kara Vasile. Second lateral judge, Kilimchuk Alexandru. Third lateral judge, Turkano Alexei. Fourth lateral judge, Suhan Yulian. Timekeeper, Dimitri Petro. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's start the Eagle 10 tournament. Are you? Ready! <laughs> Presenting the first fight of the evening, introducing first in the blue corner, he's coming from Moldova. Make some noise for Maxim Iza! Hello everyone and welcome to Eagles Fighting Championship 10. Man, I'll tell you what, this is a big night in the history of EFC, the 10th big event of the promotion, and I am looking forward to this one. So many great fights on the card. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be very, very hard to top what happened in Eagles Fighting Championships 9, but if any event can do it, this one can. Opening things up here tonight, we've got a uh, Moldova versus Moldova matchup. I'll tell you what, these are some of the most exciting fights that you can find in this country. A lot of times they like to match up the guys, Moldova versus a foreigner. But when you've got two guys from a very, very small country and two competitive gyms, it always makes for very, very exciting action inside the EFC cage. Maxim Isak and Visale Miza set the lock horns here in our opening contest of the evening. Well, the first four or five fights or so are gonna feature some young and up and coming fighters here from Moldova and from other parts of Europe. Maxim Isak making his pro debut here tonight is the 20 year old, represents the Lion Gym. And uh, those of you who've been following EFC throughout the years know that the Lion Gym has produced a lot of top fighters, some of which are champions right now in Eagles Fighting Championships, including the heavyweight champion, Alexander Romanov, and also the former bantamweight champion, Mihail Sirbu. So a lot of great fighters coming out of the Lion Gym, and I'm interested to see what Maxim Isak can bring to the cage here tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing his opponent into the red corner. He's coming from Moldova. Make some noise up for Vasile Merza.
And there you see his opponent, Vasil Meza, also of Moldova. One year older at 21 years of age, however, does have two professional fights under his belt. He stands at one and one in his professional career right now. Before the fight, he said, I can promise that there will be a lot of blood. So you know that Miza is ready for a war in there and ready to go in there and do his job. Once that cage door closes, I think he may be the lion. He's planning on being the lion inside the cage here tonight. He also said that a lot of people choose MMA nowadays, but in my case, it was MMA that chose me. So that kind of tells me that he's got this in his blood. He feels like this is something he has to do, something that he was made to do. Maybe it's his destiny to be a cage fighter. He says, I feel great. I feel in excellent, excellent shape. I'm prepared, I'm motivated, and I'm confident that I will win this fight. So Vasil Miza, ready for business here to kick things off on the opening contest at EFC 10. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm presenting the blue corner, weighing 66 kilogram, height 1.68 meters. This is his debut in mixed martial art. Make some noise from Moldova to Maxim Isa. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the red corner, weighing 66 kilograms, height 1.61 meters, having a personal record of two fight, one win, zero draw, and one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise from Moldova to Vasile Merza. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is five minute, three round, extra one round MMA rules. Referee in the ring, Denis Fogatillo. here round one and hello look at that Isak caught him with a, a left coming in I believe right off the bat and what a way to open things up here is we've got Misa now pressing him up against the cage here holding him there with the upper part of the chest the clavicle the pectorals trying to drop low change levels but it looks to me like Isak has got his left arm in there preventing him from dropping any further he's also got the right arm overhooked well a knee there came dangerously near the groin area looking for a takedown of his own now but he's a sprawls out and does not allow it trying to work on the leg here as he gets a inside grip now switches looking for a, a double leg he made single he's trying to sweep out the other leg he's finally got him down he was relentless with that takedown and now Misa let's see what he can do from this position left hands going in both these guys as I mentioned wow left hand cracked him right in the forehead that time but both guys young up-and-comers here in Eagles Fighting Championship, so it's very important to get noticed, to get the win, but also just get on the radar here in EFC. Get on the map and pick up the victory and move forward with your career, especially Misa. He's off to a one-in-one -one start as a professional, so it's very necessary for him to be able to get that win and get another one in the win column, rather than having the losses outnumber the wins. And as for Isak, making his pro debut here tonight, especially wants to make a name for himself and come out of here with the W. Action! Back where we started here with Miza, pressing his opponent up against the cage. Now they get a little bit of separation there from the fence, and we'll see what they can do with the stand-up. 
Low kick goes in there. Isak looking for the throw. Took him down rather awkwardly, but down nonetheless, and that was the goal of it. He's in out, preventing him from getting too close. Ooh, big right hand that time dropped. I couldn't see if it connected or not, but those shots certainly are. Referee taking a good long look here. Referee Dennis Pokolatu taking a look. Right hand goes in now. So he's taking some damage here in round number one with inside two minutes left in the round. Left hand brought it over the top that time. Grazing blow across the bridge of the nose. Take a look at the discoloration of the face here of Vasil Miza turning all kinds of shades of violet and pink. Certainly exerting a lot of energy there and also eating a lot of shots into the head. Ate another shot there as Isak up to a vertical pace. Drops in that time with a right hand. And here comes some more. Right hand's going in now. Doing more damage. Inside a minute now remaining in round number one. His right hand that time was right across the throat, the upper part of the collarbone now as he slides into side control and goes right into mount now but look at the right arm of Miza it's inside on the groin area he's able to power his way out but Isak trying to maintain the position adjusts his body weight and tries to keep his opponent pinned to the canvas oh left hand went right down the middle and hit him right between the eyes More shots coming in. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a long night at the office for Vasil Miza. He continues to take this kind of punishment. Those are certainly not fight-stopping shots where he's, he's not, the eyes are not rolling back in the head. He's still conscious in there. But he's certainly going to have something to think about between the rounds. Go back and take a look at what happened there in that opening round. He got caught with a big left. Did Vasil Miza in the opening part, uh, opening seconds there of that round. And then as time went on, I believe that Miza did get a takedown or two. But uh, for the majority of the second half of that round, it was Maxim Isak on top, delivering a tremendous amount of blows onto Miza, who was fighting off of his back, trying to do his best to stay in this thing, but Isak landing a lot of shots. Are you ready? Are you ready? Fight! Round two. See what happens here in round number two is he's a Rushes in again. This time he goes in with the leg as they tumble to the ground and back up now. I think that if anything, Isak may prefer to keep this thing standing up or take him down and drop some bombs there. But either way, he wants to do the punishment with his hands now. And as you can see there, Mizo is able once again to get his right arm inside. But that's not going to do him any favors here. Look at this. He's got a body triangle on and he's got the arm trapped on the inside of his left leg. Now he's prying it free as he tries to maneuver in the position here for the rear naked choke, catching him with shots on the inside. Those are painful. Those are very painful blows going in here. Trying to slip the right arm through there. 
He's uh, trying to get rid of that. Look at that tricky little shot there. You lose your balance when you do that, but it may do some damage in the meantime now. There's another good shot. Big right hands going in there. Those are going to pay dividends as this fight goes forward. You can see the reddening now. Now he's trying to slip the left arm in. Look at this. Miza weaseled right out of it. Great move from Miza to get out of harm's way. And now he's in a great position here with Izak up against the cage. Look at the way he's got both of the arms neutralized. Well, he did temporarily. And now we'll see what Izak can do from the bottom. Before we saw it for about at least two solid minutes in round number one where Maxime Izak was having his way on top and Miza on the bottom. Now with the tables turned, it looks like Izak trying to keep Miza at a distance, make his way back up to his feet as he continues to scoot backwards up against the cage. But Miza relentless, staying on him, trying to control the legs, trying to keep him down on the mat. And that doesn't look like that's going to be very successful. He may be able to take him back down here. He's got, well, he had a pretty good position there for a double leg. Now he loses it, eats a little shot. Boy, this is just the opening contest, folks. Still a long way to go. 13 fights on the card here tonight, including two big title matchups later on. Reaction. In the main event of the evening, we will be seeing a defense of the EFC Lightweight Championship title. Grigore Panfili defending against Ivan Zvirblia. That one should be an absolute war. Zvirblia has been on a roll here in EFC. Undefeated at 3-0. He now finally has earned his title opportunity. Speaking of opportunities, submission opportunity here. Isak rolls through, though. Or he's not completely out of harm's way yet. That arm is being twisted and contorted in all sorts of different directions. And he's still got the legs to contend with of Miza. Blocks that left hand. Miza has not had a lot of success off of his back here so far. Traps the right arm, but still has to deal with the left as he's using the legs. Try to give himself some room in there, but Isak still pressing forward now and has him trapped in that corner. Steps back now. Is he going to let him up? No. He tries to go in and nails him with that right hand. A couple of them landed. He's trying to slither his way down there across that meeting of the canvas and the cage. It's a hard place to be trapped. There is, again, moving his body, always staying active. Now the guy just laying flat on the canvas and not doing anything. A lot of guys will just try to grab you, wrap you up, and try to get a stand-up. Not these two. They're in constant motion, always trying to stay busy, stay active. Left hand goes in now. Sometimes he's active stands back up, reassesses the situation, and tries to fall in while dropping a punch. Another big right hand, partially blocked, and an up kick in return from Miza. There's the horn, end of round two. Go back and take a look at some highlights here from round number two. Man, I'll tell you what, a very back and forth kind of a fight here. Miza had some submission attempts. We saw more great ground and pound from Maxim Izak, which is going to score him a tremendous amount of points in this matchup. And there's still one round 
left to go, ladies and gentlemen. Five more minutes left in this fight to sort it out. Well, Doral Christian in attendance. Former champion in kickboxing. He's had many of fights here in this building. A lot of great FIA fighters in attendance here. I can see around ringside. I thought I saw Stanislav Ramita as well in attendance, uh, as well as Pavel Zhravlev. Whoa, these two mixing it up here right off the bat. And again, up against the cage, reminiscent of what we saw in the early portions of round number one as Miza continues to apply the pressure. Tries to turn him. Knee on the inside lands. You can see both these two guys sweating profusely, especially Vasil Miza now. It's been a long couple rounds, as I said. I think that Izak has really done a lot of damage with the ground and pound, and certainly Miza feeling that. Not only fighting with his opponent there, but also fighting with himself as he fights through the pain. The pain of being punched in the head at least 20 times in this fight. Up and down goes Maxim Mizak. Miza scores another takedown. He's been quite successful with those takedowns, but has not been able to capitalize once he gets his opponent on the mat. Great shot there from inside the cage as these two continue to battle it up here up against the fence. He's just got a high crotch there, but... And now Izak pushing him down, trying to get away. He's just got a death grip on that left leg. These two are fighting in the EFC featherweight division where the belt is currently vacant. So not only is this an important matchup for these two to make an impression, get themselves noticed, and perhaps be invited back to EFC, but with no champion crowned here in the 65 kilogram weight division also adds a lot of importance to this matchup as well. He's uh, staying with that leg. He's decided on a game plan and he's sticking with it. A lot of times that's very important to kind of follow through on what you're doing it. If you can finally pull it off, no matter how long it takes, if you can finally get that done, it does send a message to your opponent that you're willing to stick with something and that you can have your way if you're given enough time. Referee Dennis Pocatillo calling for action here. He's working on it. Still working on that takedown here. Now, you got to think, what is the game plan here for Misa? Is it just to finally score Center. the takedown, or is, is he not going to be satisfied until he gets it? Is he tired? Is he exhausted up against the cage? What is going through the mind of Vasil Misa? Shoots in for another takedown. Well, maybe they're not the most aesthetically pleasing third round here, but certainly an exhausting one, especially for Miza. He's continuously trying to get Maxim Izak down to the canvas here, quite unsuccessfully. Every once in a while, he does take him down, which means that as far, there he goes, he finally got him there. Good job with that takedown. For a moment there, it looked like he could have gone right up if he continued the action, maybe gone right up into the full mount. Now he's trying to go for it. He's acting sort of a half 
sitting position there up against the cage. But he is controlling the action. You have to give him that. He's controlling the action. He, he's in a more dominant position. He did score one takedown, possibly two. Isaac, on the other hand, landing a few punches on the inside. Perhaps another takedown coming up. It's a very controlling round for him. It's not pretty. He's not going to win any points for style. So but uh, perhaps the more successful in that particular round. And there you see uh, Alexander Buduja and Stanislav Renita, two longtime FIA kickboxers. Oh, and there's uh, Konstantin Rusu, the current KOK champion. Just won that belt a couple weeks ago in Riga, Latvia. And I believe that was Vitali Matai next to him as well. Two current champions and King of Kings. And here we go. Look at this. Left hand bouncing off the cranium there from Isak. As the judges tally up the final scores here, this is going to be an interesting uh, decision here. And I think that somebody's going to walk out of here a little bit disappointed because that was a very, well, it was not a very action-packed third round. And at certain points, the action was very back and forth. But ring announcer Mike Diamonds has stepped inside the EFC cage. And we will send it up to him momentarily for the official decision. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winner is, uh, by unanimous decision, for the blue corner, Maxim Isa. Your winner by unanimous decision, Maxim Isak. I think that's a good call. Isak did a lot of great ground and pound in those first two rounds, and that was perhaps the most damaging blows of the fight. Up next, we go to the bantamweight division, Oleg Bruma and Lilian Grosu coming up next. Don't you dare go anywhere. <laughs>